Deuteronomy chapter 16. Observe the month Aben, and keep the Passover unto the Lord thy God. For in the month of Aben, the Lord thy God brought thee forth out of Egypt by night. What God are we to serve? We're to serve the Jewish God. Well, the Jewish Israel God, they had other gods. What is the Israel God? The God that brought them out among the land of Egypt by signs, by wonders, by terrible works. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Don't have the God of Abraham and the God of Ishmael. That's not the right God. Thou shalt therefore sacrifice the Passover unto the Lord thy God of the flock and the herd in the place which the Lord shall choose to place his name there that will be Jerusalem. Remember, they're on the other side. They're not in the land yet. And thou shalt eat no leavened bread with it. Leaven has a bad condensation in the Bible. It's false doctrine. It's something added that gets involved in the whole thing. A little leaven leavens a whole lump, the Bible says. You let a little sin in. And it just spreads. Seven days shall thou eat unleavened bread, wherewith even the bread of affliction. For thou camest forth out of the land of Egypt in haste, that thou mayest remember the day when thou camest forth out of the land of Egypt for all the days of thy life. When you left Egypt, you grabbed your dough, you grabbed all the utensils, but you did not add the leaven to it yet. And you baked it that night, that morning, and without the leaven. And that's to remind you that night, every Passover, that night you came out of Egypt. Now, the church has a resembling remembrance of the Lord's Supper. That when we take part of the bread and the wine, we are to remember what Jesus Christ suffered and died in his life for us. When we are to look forward to his coming and with that we look back to remembrance of our Passover lamb the Lord Jesus Christ when he suffered and died and had victory on that cross and there shall be no leavened bread seen seen within thee in all thy coasts seven days I've been told by Men who were, who were Jewish, grew up Jewish, and then got saved. And they say that they, before this feast comes, they sweep, they clean, they vacuum. They will remove what they will believe any dust of leaven out of that kitchen, out of that house. Man, they only turn to the Lord Jesus Christ and get every bit of their dust of their sins cleansed. They are real serious when it comes to this Passover night. When you're, they're dedicated to the Old Testament and the law. They will make sure their houses do not have that leaven. Neither shall there, neither shall there anything of the flesh, which thou sacrifices the first day even, remain all night until the morning. That meat is not to be, is not to be remain until the morning. The Bible says. Thou mayest not sacrifice the Passover within any of thy gates. You can't do it in Bethel. You can't do it in Dan. You can't do it in Beersheba. You can't do it in Bethlehem. You got to do it when Jerusalem is set up by David. And the temple is built by Solomon. It is to be done there. Now there were other places that were set up. Shiloh was the place where the tabernacle and the temple were set up. You couldn't just, okay, here we are, just sit down at our table and have our own Passover meal right now. And that's kind of interesting because that's what Jewish families do today. If Passover comes over in Daytona Beach, Florida, Los Angeles, California, Hartford, Connecticut, New York City, New York, uh, Little Town, Iowa. And they sit down, they have the Passover meal at their house. That's a violation of, of the scriptures. And they do that today. Now some dedicated Jews will go to Jerusalem. Okay. 
fine. But there's no temple there to bring your lamb and have a sacrifice. And what's remarkable enough about that is, all right, and I don't ever want to, but if I were to take a trip to the Holy Land, Jerusalem, and I go to Jerusalem, I go to the city of Jerusalem, I go where David was. I go where the temple would be, and that's, a, that's the dome of the rock. That's not where Jesus Christ died. And I would be foolish enough to pay one of them Roman Catholics or Arabian, say, show me all the places in the Bible. They would be lying. Because the Bible speaks about Jesus Christ dying without the city gate. And they took him upon a hill called Calvary. You want a real Passover today during the church age? You go to Jerusalem if you want to do that. And you don't go in Jerusalem. You go outside of Jerusalem where Calvary is. And I've heard they got places. I don't believe where. I don't believe, man. Like they got an ark over here in what, Tennessee? Something like that. I don't believe that mess. I know where the ark is. It ain't in America. Why would it be in America? It's in Mount Ararat. Read your Bible, idiots. Neither shall there anything of the flesh which thou sacri sacrifice the first day at even. See, at even. When did Jesus Christ die? He died at even, 6 p.m. When was that lamb to be killed? 6 p.m. Remain all night until the morning. So what did they do with Jesus' body? They took it down. He did not stay all night on that cross. And the Bible speaks, Cursed him that hangeth on the tree, and you shall not let his body hang all night. You think the Roman government really cared about that? They just left them all night? They would leave them. But as scriptures be fulfilled, Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scripture. He died at even, and they took his body down off that cross before morning. In morning, it was laying in the, in the grave. Thou mayest not sacrifice the Passover with any of thy gates, which the Lord thy God giveth thee. But at the place which the Lord thy God shall choose to place his name in Jerusalem, there shalt thou sacrifice the Passover at even, there it is again, at the going down of the sun. That's kind of interesting because the day that Jesus died, there was darkness. The sun wasn't to be seen. At the season that thou camest forth out of Egypt, and thou shalt roast. And eat it in the place which the Lord thy God shall choose, Jerusalem. And thou shalt turn in the morning and go into thy tents. Six days shalt thou, yes, six days thou shalt eat unleavened bread. And on the seventh day shall be a solemn assembly to the Lord thy God. Thou shalt do no work therein. So we're going from the Passover to the, the feast day of seven days of unleavened bread. Now, seven weeks shall thou number unto thee. Begin to number the seven weeks from the such time as thou begin to put the sickle to the corn. This will be the feast of weeks, 50 days. This will be your Pentecost. And thou shalt, 50 days after, after the Passover, after the, the, the feast, then comes Pentecost. And thou shalt keep the feast of weeks unto the Lord thy God with a tribute of a free will offering of thy hand, which thou shalt give unto the Lord thy God according as the Lord God has blessed thee. So, what God has blessed you with, God says bring. So God wants a cheerful giver, and God blesses us, again from last night's night, God blesses us so for we to give to help others. Now, you're not giving God anything. What does God need? But you're giving and supplying to the priests in the tabernacle, to the Levites, that they may have needs. They may have their, their ways to eat and survive. And thou shalt rejoice before the Lord thy God. Thou and thy son and thy daughter and thy maid servant and thy ma man servant and thy maid servant, and the Levite that is within thy gates, and the stranger. Oh, look at that. There's a Gentile. How do you know that stranger is 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 Gentile? Well, Solomon, the Bible says that he marries many strange wives. 
That's not, and they'll tell you, Egypt, Moab. Um, I think it's Isaiah chapter 1. This is another place. It speaks about the stranger. Let's see if I can find it. Uh, Isaiah 1, 7. About the stranger. And they're very important in the Bible because I'm a stranger. The Bible calls me an alien. I'm glad God's not Donald Trump. I'm glad God welcomes me in as a stranger. Your country is desolate, talking to the Jews. Your cities are burned with fire. Your land, strangers devour it. So see, there's your land, there you are, and here come strangers into the land. They're non-Jews. Those strangers are Gentiles. They're non-Jewish people. And the stranger, and the fathers, and the widow that are among you, in the place which the Lord thy God has chosen to place his name. You know there's a stranger recorded in the Bible, in the book of Acts, the Ethiopian eunuch. He was a stranger, yet became ser serving God. And thou shalt remember, 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 remember. Mark that word in your Bible. We're not supposed to forget what Christ has done for us. That thou was a bondman in Egypt, and thou shalt observe and do these steps. You know what's funny? You hear one race of people crying and griping about their servitude, their slavery in this country, and yet you never hear the Jew ever mention anything about their servitude. Of those people that are crybabying about their servitude in this country. And the Bible speaks of over 400 years. I forget what the the total number of years are. And the Bible says they served with rigor. And the nation had the, had the goal to say, all right, fine, you're going to make bricks, but don't. we're not going to give you no more straw. We're not going to give you no more rebar. They were killing the Jewish people. Where's the Jewish History Month? We got the Black History Month, and then they make up their own little stupid little holidays right around Christmas, Kabanza, whatever you want to call that crap. That's crap. You know why you don't have a Jewish History Month in America in the public school system? Because you would have to open your Bible and show them the history of the Jews. Because the history of the Jews are within from Genesis to Revelation. Now, the Jews don't believe Matthew to Revelation, but they're there. And then you would have to overpower the Black History Month because the Egyptians and the foul treatment they did to the Jewish people. And you know why? Because God said, I'll curse them that curse you. And that was said long before they were in Egypt. There was a king, Pharaoh, that took care of Joseph and them. And then there was a king that knew not Joseph. And there was servitude. And God says, you better remember that. You know what God tells the Christian? You better remember before you came to Calvary on how wicked you were and how lousy you were and what servant of Satan in the world you were. Remember that. Count your many blessings. Name them one by one. Start that blessing that day you came to Calvary. You can even start that day when someone invited you. You had gospel track. Whatever it had that brought you to Calvary. Start counting your blessings from that point. Remember. Our Lord's Supper is remember what Christ has done for you. Remember he's coming. That's what these feasts are all about. Thou shalt observe the Feast of Tabernacles. Seven days after thou hast gathered in thy corn and thy wine. Now we're getting a little more. In, I think it's Leviticus, it tells you this is the seventh month. I forget what date it was. But now we're being told these Feasts are set by the seasons of the crops. That's kind of interesting because all these seasons of crops where you're planting or sowing, don't you see that in the Christian life that you are planting seeds, you are sowing seeds, you are watering seeds? Fruitfulness. Thou shalt observe the Feast of Tabernacles. So let's look at Tabernacles. Now, this is probably more biblically foundation where Jesus Christ was born. Okay? Doesn't say, but scripture would show this is the feast. Now what? After thou hast gathered thy corn. 
Now, that's not corn on the cob. That's wheat and barley. What do you do with corn, wheat? You make bread. And what's the next one? And I wine. There's the Last Supper. There's the Lord's Memorial of the church right there. The bread and the wine. The wheat and the wine. There it is. So Christ, if born in the Feast of Tabernacle, he's born of the Last Supper. He's born of the Lord's Supper. Thou shalt rejoice in thy feast. Thy son, you better witness and tell Jesus to your son, to thy daughter. You better tell her. And thy maid, manservant. I don't know why I want to say maidservant when I see manservant. And thy maidservant. And the Levite. The stranger. And the father. And the widow. That are within thy gates. Let everybody. Remember that Passover lamb? Remember it said, even if you go. If your house be too small for that lamb. You're to bring it to your neighbor's house. And I'm going to show you something I don't know what. Why? It says, thy, thy feast, thy son, thy daughter, thy maid, manservant, thy maidservant, the Levite, the stranger, the fatherless, the widow. It doesn't mention mother or wife for some reason. Your son and your daughter. Where's the wife? It can't be, you know, the male shall appear three times a year because there's the daughter. I don't know. I have no idea. May you get your mind off Mary? Doesn't say father either. Get your mind off Joseph. When Jesus Christ is born, it's not little blue outfit Mary or Joseph. Isn't that kind of interesting? What about the mother of God? No, she's not there. He's the, Her husband's not there. So that just it's not mentioned for some reason. Seven days shalt thou keep a solemn feast, solemn feast unto the Lord thy God in the place which the Lord shall choose. Well, on the night of Jesus Christ, if he was born, this is in Bethlehem. And on the eighth day, they head to Jerusalem. They're in Jerusalem, and he is circumcised, and he's given the name, that free name, Jesus. Kind of interesting. The Lord thy God in the place the Lord shall choose. Because the Lord thy God shall bless thee in all thy increase and in all thy works of thy hands. Therefore thou shalt surely rejoice. And it's the crops. They're come in. It's harvest. Three times in the year shall all thy males appear before the Lord thy God in the place where which he shall choose. So why were they all there at Pentecost in Acts chapter 2? This is one of those three feasts. Why were they, why were all the people in Jerusalem? Because God said you're supposed to be there. That's what God told them three times a year, you're to be there. Be in the Lord God in the place which he shall choose. In the feast of unleavened bread, that's right after the Passover. That's the next day, seven days. Christ is our bread that is unspotted. No sin. No false doctrine. And the Feast of Weeks. That's the past. I mean, that's the that's the Pentecost. That's where they were when they gathered in Acts chapter 2. And the foundation of the church has begun. Even though it began with the empty tomb, but went out and started witnessing and the feast of tabernacles that's when jesus christ was born so when they bring jesus christ if he's born on the feast of tabernacles they bring him on the eighth day to be circumcised at jerusalem like the law said people are just leaving people are just right it's the, almost the end of the feast it's the eighth day so there would have been a lot of people who had seen Jesus and Mary and Joseph bringing that child to the temple. Now watch this. Watch this. And they shall not appear before the Lord empty. Mary had a little lamb. Its fleece was white as snow. 
And wherever Mary would go, yeah, whatever, I blew it. But she had to bring the two turtle doves, but she held the lamb in her arms. Every man shall give as he is able. There's that giving again. Give as you're able. There were set tithes. There were you have to tithe your this and that. But there are awful. There are also offerings that you give what God has blessed you. And again, the offering is if God has blessed you, give it according to the blessings of the Lord thy God, which He has given thee. Now He's giving you nothing. And you don't give nothing. He's giving you over an abundance of abundance. Then you can give over the abundance of abundance. Judges and officers shall thou make thee in thy gates. All right now, here's the city hall in the gates. Where the judges and where the officials of those cities, which the Lord thy God giveth thee, throughout the, thy tribes, all twelve tribes, all twelve areas of Israel, the gates within their cities, they were have men and judges and officials. When you came into the gate, you had to check in. If you were swindled out of money, you, you, you went to the gate and you said, hey, listen, this guy over here, he swindled me. I got a case and this is where it would be. And let's go to Ruth chapter 4. We'll see this in, in action. Ruth chapter 4. And this would be Bethlehem. And you realize in Ruth chapter 4 where we're going to read... This could have been where Jesus walked through. Oh, actually, carried through. Then went Boaz. Then then went Boaz up to the gate, okay, of Bethlehem, and sat him down there. There were seats there. And behold, the kinsman of whom Boaz spake came by, and unto him he said, "Ho, oh, such a one, turn aside, come over here, sit down here." And he turned aside and sat down. And he took ten men of the elders of the city, city hall, and said, Sit ye down here. And they sat down. And he said unto, unto the kinsmen, Naomi, and he goes about his business. And they're going to set off a business about a land that Naomi has from her husband. And they're going to set off a, a woman who's involved with that land by a, by a husband that is dead. And it's true. And all that business is done here at the city gate with the elders. They are witnesses. This is where the signed, sealed, delivering of all papers will be. At the gates of these cities. And here they are. Judges and officers, like we saw in Ruth 4. Shall thou make thee in all thy gates, which the Lord thy God giveth thee, throughout thy tribes. And they shall judge the people with just judgment. You can't find that really today. Thou shalt not rest judgment. Thou shalt not respect persons of movie status, television, sports, money. That's what that means. Neither take a gift, which is a bribe, for a gift does blind the eyes of the wise and pervert the works of the righteousness. So look what God says about bribery. That which is altogether just shall thou follow. You're supposed to do right when you're judging. That thou mayest live. Uh -oh. Inherit the land. There's that land again. Which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Now you're going to see later on as we get to the books as we're coming through. We get to Jeremiah. The fatherless and the widow which God protects. They're not helping them at all. They're not taking care of them. They're calling evil good. And good evil. It's almost like a American court system. Thou shalt not plant thee a. Oh wait a minute, we picked up a whole new. Look at all the subjects we got here. All right, we just went from judges. Now we got a paragraph mark. Thou shalt not plant thee a grove of any trees near unto the altar of the Lord thy God. Now there's a problem there. I know we're in the Old Testament, but Okay, the message is over. We're going to sing four stanzas of whatever, just as I am. Anybody wants to come up to the 
And then most churches that have the, there's a trees around the pulpit. Something wrong there. Thou shalt not plant thee as grove of trees. I don't know if they're artificial trees or not, stuff like that. Most of the churches I've been in have been artificial trees. So, any trees near the altar of the Lord thy God, which thou shalt make thee. You cannot have the altar amongst trees because that would make the altar a god as statues would be in these groves of trees. Mary is one of the very famous people of statues found in the groves. And God's against it. Neither shalt thou set, up, set thee up an image. Any image. Well, an image. Cross. Is that an image? But it says, Neither shalt thou set, up, set thee up any image. I've been in some churches, they got pictures of famous people on their walls. I've been in a couple of churches where they got a plaque with a person's name on it. Neither shall thou set thee any image, I'll leave it like that, which the Lord thy God, he's my God. That God of the Old Testament is the God of the New Testament that saved my soul and he said he hates. Nobody would think today that God hates anything. He hates the imagery. He hates the, the groves. He hates anything that takes the love and the worship of, of him. God said, I hate that. Now, you do whatever you want. When you get to the judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judgment, wherever you go and what you think is okay, God may just say, I, you know, I did have a problem. It's burnt up or you're guilty. That's between you and God. Well, that's what it says, black and white. Just, I'll cling to your rugged cross. No, I won't. I'll cling to Jesus Christ. But no clothes there.